morning, friends. So, let me back my camera up a little bit. There we go. So, today I'm headed back to the classroom. First of three days that I'll be there this week. Um, I'm doing three days this week because we have um, flex days during the school year. So, if we work our days in the summer, then we get those days off throughout the school year. I do not know what our school year will look like. Um, I hope that we'll still have those days, but who knows with um, all of the modifications that they're having to make to the calendar and everything. So I guess we'll see, but I'm up there anyway. So <laughs> I guess get to sign in today and um, be there officially. So I am running about an hour late this morning. My daughter races cross country and her practice ran long this morning. Oh my goodness, somebody just passed a big trucker on a hill on a double yellow line and almost smashed into an oncoming car. That was nice. Florida drivers, y'all. So anyway, um, anyway, so she races cross country um, right now anyway. She's really interested in it and they can do conditioning um, even though sports haven't officially started. So she has practice, um, in the mornings for a couple hours and it ran long this morning so I'm running much later than I wanted to right now it's about 9 40 so I didn't get up to school like I wanted to but we're gonna try to see what we can get done I don't really have a plan for today I know it'll come to me once I get up to my room um, but tomorrow I'm bringing my printer back up and I'm going to do, be doing some printing and laminating. I'm going to work on the labels um, for the book bins that I showed you. I did leave that link for uh, both Jessica Meacham, Meacham's book labels. She has a fantastic library. If you've ever been to her website, I, I probably have as many books as her, but I definitely don't have it organized like she does. She's like the guru when it comes to um, book library. So you should definitely check out her website. It's, I think it's jmeacham.com. M-E-A-C-H-A-M. Anyway, so that's the plan for tomorrow. I'm going to get those book labels done tomorrow and um, set up. I don't think we're going to be allowed to have a library, but I'm going to set it up anyway because, you know, there's no harm in like organizing it and getting it done. So I will show you all of that tomorrow. Um, and then I'm also going to label, relabel the green and yellow bins, my Ikea towers. I'm going to do that tomorrow, print out some new, um, labels. I'm just going to label those with student numbers at the moment. Um, and then if we don't end up using them for that, then they'll just have numbers on them. So that'll be fine. Um, so I have some new things to show you, some things that I got, um, over the weekend that I'm pretty excited about and I've been playing around with. So when I get up to the classroom, I will pull those out and show those and share that um, stuff with you guys. So yeah, that's where we're at. I'm going to go park and I'm going to head into the school and sign in and I will see you guys in just a minute. Okay. So I have my good camera in my hand now instead of my phone. Um, sometimes I have to use my phone because it just lays better in the little um, tripod that I have and sometimes I have to use this camera. So I apologize. So I wanted to show you guys um, what I did over the weekend and I went to go film it as a separate video and it was like two minutes long because it's just so easy. But I went ahead and made the glue boxes um, and I will insert the video of that right now. Okay guys, so <clears throat> what you're going to need to make your glue boxes, sponges, and don't go cheap on the sponges, get the good um, Scotch-Brite, they soak up better, so they keep um, nicer longer, glue, and then your little boxes, and I'm just using the little boxes from the Dollar Tree, we actually used these last year for our sightword um, boxes, but this year, since my students aren't going to be able to share, I'm going to use them for that. So, boxes, glue, sponges, and I'm going to get the sponges wet with water. And here's a little tip for you put a little bit of um, mouthwash in your water so when you squirt it, it kind of helps kill any kind of bacteria that can be 
growing on them and it keeps them fresher longer. So here we go. My little helper is going to help me. Say hi. And we're going to get started. Okay, so this is all you do. You take your sponges, cut them in half if you're going to use these. If you're going to use like Tupperware bins or anything like that, then you'll just want to cut them down to size. So I just cut them in half and then you get them wet and squeeze out most of the water. Make sure they're still a little damp. And then you're going to take your boxes. You're going to put, make sure that's a little bit of glue on the bottom. That might be a little too much. And then, sorry about the lighting. It's kind of dark in here tonight. Just a little bit of glue in each bottom. Okay. I have enough, yep. All right, Aiden, go ahead and put the sponges on top. You're such a good helper. Yep, do, yep, just do that. Just put them right there on top. Yep, drop them in. Green kind of, I think it was attached to green. There the you go. Alright, super easy. Fun little project for your kids if you have kids. And then I'm just putting numbers on the front of them. I'll show you those here in a second. Alright buddy, now spray the top of it with a little bit of water. Here, let me make sure, adjust that a little bit. Alright, now try it again. There you go. Each top of each one. There you go. All right. And we gotta put more. We gotta put the glue in the bottom of those. We didn't do that, did we? Or did we? Yeah, did. Maybe you need to put a little bit more glue in the bottom of those. Mommy will do that. So can you put the lids on those for me? Tighten them up and set them to the side. And then I will show you what they look like when we're done. That's it. It's so easy. All right, so showing you one more time. We have the glue in the bottom of the box, and you want to go ahead and put a good amount of glue to get started, and then you won't have to refill it that often. All right, and then you tap it with the half of a sponge. These were from the Dollar Tree, so they were a dollar for four for a four pack. And then the little um, boxes were from the Dollar uh, Tree. Actually, I think the sponges were from the Dollar Store, but they were still a dollar. And then the boxes. You guys know all these little boxes. They're like, you know, everybody uses them for every different kind of thing. So easy peasy. Just go ahead and spray Betty. Cheap project. There you go. And he's just getting the top nice and wet and you want it wet to start soaking up some of that um, glue. And then as your students use them and you notice them getting a little dry out, I squirt mine with water about once a week and then flip the sponge over. All right, Betty, can you put the lids on? Number two. Yep. And then this is what I did. I mean, no, nothing fancy. You could make fancy little labels for the tops of these. Um, but in quite honesty, those would probably come off with my students. So I just wrote their uh, number on it. So if it ever got left out, it, I would be able to make sure that student kept their own. So there's no sharing of glue, no passing germs back and forth. And there you go. All right, we're gonna finish these up and I will show you guys the end product. Okay, y'all, here's the finished product. So here they are, um, number on it. And then, like I said, if you let them sit, the glue will kind of soak through, the, or the sponge will soak up the glue and it'll be sitting on the top. Um, so I thought I'd have Aiden show you how easy this is. So he's gonna pretend like he's got a super important piece of paper. It's got a picture on it and he's gonna glue it down to his paper. So show us how it's done, buddy. So you put it on the sponge, you tap, 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 and then you lift it up, and you put it on the paper. And then you just tap, tap, tap it on the paper, and it's less mess, right? So here we go. If this is your glue bottles in your classroom, you can either deal with this, or you can have a nice, neat glue box. Easy peasy, right, buddy? All right, good job. Okay, so you saw the, them in action, being done. My precious son um, helped me, and then he insisted on playing with one, and so now I have one upside down. But this is what they look like after they have sat. Um, so I'll just open one for you. 
They've been sitting for uh, 24 hours now. Um, so you can see, can you see the glue up there in it? And I will go ahead and I'll spray it one more time just to make sure it's nice and damp. But yeah, super easy. And then, you know, every couple weeks I just add a little bit more glue to the bottom. And they have their own little glue box. And I mean, I love them. So that one got upside down. But when I, and here in a little bit, I will spray those with just another little squirt of water on the top. And those are done. Um, that's extra glue. So I got, I think I mentioned this in the video, I got these from the Dollar Tree. Um, everybody has seen those. I got this from Dollar General. I think it was $3, and it was way more than enough glue. I still have about a quarter, maybe a little bit less than a quarter left, um, somewhere <clears throat> around there. And the sponges, I could not find them at our Walmart. And they were sold out of them, and all they had was the bristly side. You have to get these types of sponges for them to work the best. And don't go for like the knockoff brand. Get the, I think it's pronounced a cello, a celio sponges. Anyway, they um, work the best that I found. And so I just cut those in half, put them in, put a little glue on the bottom, squirt them with water. Make sure your sponge is damp when you put it in, and then just continue to keep it moist. So as the students use them, I just will walk around with a uh, squirt bottle and they will um, flip the sponge over. I'll squirt both sides and then they put it up. Now before I've used like table group glue boxes so I'd have like eight of them and do like two per table or sometimes just one on a table if it was a small table um, and then just let me flip you around. Um, so I'd have like one on a table or two on a table and then they would just share them. Um, but obviously that's not going to happen this year. So I think it worked out great to use those. Um, I keep meaning to go to the Dollar Tree and pick up a few more things. And if I go, I will try to take you inside with me and show you what I'm, what I'm picking up. Or I'll just show you when I, when I get done. Um, so yeah, those were pretty easy. And my son like used it that whole afternoon. He was coloring in a coloring book and then gluing, cutting out the little pieces and then gluing them down on regular pieces of paper. So that was fun. Um, okay, so I just realized my K fell. It's kind of in a weird spot so I need to staple that up. And I need to figure out what to do next. I know I said that I was going to do something today when I got back here today, and I don't remember what it was. Um, hmm. Okay. Let me get back to you. I'm sorry. I'm eating. I'm eating breakfast now. Um, okay. So I think I have some ideas of things that I wanted to get done. <clears throat> I'm having to use my phone, so I apologize if the sound's kind of messed up. I want to get these two boards done. That one and that one, that's going to be my focus wall. Not my focus wall, my sound wall. That one's my sound wall. This one's my focus wall. So it's going to have our calendar and our standards and our I can statements on it. And that's going to be our sound wall. So I'd like to get those sorted and put up. That's the plan. But then I realized I needed to get a new calendar. So on my iPad, I just started a go by <laughs> list and put calendar on it. So I need to go to Lakeshore and get a new calendar set today because when I left my other classroom, I had that calendar glued on to the board. And when I went to go pull it off, it ripped and it kind of got nasty. So I need to go buy a new calendar today or sometime this week before I can do that one. But I'm going to try to get excuse me, that one up. So I'm going to do that today. I'm also going to tackle those boxes and get those out of the way so I can get this space cleaned up and get that bulletin board done right there. And what else? Oh, I was going to cover my chairs. Let me show you. I was going to cover my crate seats and make two new crate seats, but I need to take the crates with me because I got to get boards for them. So I have to go get stuff for these crate seats. And one of you guys actually suggested to use shower curtains. 
So I think I'm gonna try that because that would be way cheaper than buying um, like plastic vinyl to go over, go over the fabric. Um, so yeah, I need to I need to go to Target. I need to go to Walmart. I need to go to the fabric store. Where else? Lakeshore. So I've got a lot of places to go and I can't go after school this week because maybe I can go tomorrow before I come in. We'll see. So let's go get started. So that's done and I went ahead and just put them all in even though I'm only going to have probably 12 kids. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to split classes yet with some students doing online, some students doing at home. So I just went ahead and stacked them all and then I put my extras in that little bin so that at least this way they're organized and then I can kind of distribute them as needed. This is where I usually have my students put their backpacks. So they put their backpack in there and each box is numbered and I showed you last week how I used these clips before or my, in my, one of my other videos how I used those clips on there but I think backpacks coming in and out are going to knock the clips off so I'm just going to use my little system that I had before where I had a sticker and then I slid their number card in there and I'm actually going to put it on the inside because um, that way they can see it a lot easier. So yeah, that's that. That's done. Now I'm going to take this box and the social studies ones. Those are going to go in my cabinet. So I'm going to go put those in my cabinet real quick. And then I'm going to go get paper and tackle that board. Okay, so I wanted to show you my forky mask. Isn't he cute? I just got done talking to my principal um, and asking lots of questions. Sorry, I need a coffee. Um, so I got, I think, a few answers. Um, and so I thought I'd share with you guys what um, some of the updates were. Um, so let me sit down. I'll just sit down over here and talk. Um, so I've always had like a small group of table or a small group of desks and tables so that my kids could do flexible seating. And I asked him if we were gonna get PPE like dividers, how we were gonna separate desks, what would work for us. And he asked me, I said, should I keep the desks or should I do tables? And um, he said, well, what, what would you prefer to do? What have you always done? What do you feel comfortable with? And I said, well, I'd like to keep the tables and separate my kids out 
and he said go for it do that so now I need to think about flexible seating within the classroom with the tables if I want to do that if I want to commit to that because I have no problem doing flexible seating um, the only one I wouldn't do this year would be the floor table because or at least not until Christmas because of our um, not being able to move around the room if I do desks I'm likely gonna have to spread them out three feet apart and I think I might play around with it and see what that would look like but I honestly don't think with all of my stuff in the room because he told me not to remove any furniture that it was fine um, I don't know that I would be able to do what I wanted to do I know I could separate them out flexible seating wise let me show you what I'm thinking because this pod over here minus that one I'm gonna move that one somewhere else um, I'm gonna pull at least two pods out I think I'm gonna pull these two pods in the middle out and I'm gonna put a group of tables here because I can separate them out three to a table they're three feet apart that way I'm hoping turn back around I'm hoping that we get dividers like plexiglass dividers between our tables and our desks um, so that our students can still collaborate but they're separated I, I know that the plexiglass doesn't necessarily do anything the masks don't necessarily do anything the face shields don't necessarily do anything I think it's gonna have to be a combined effort of a lot of different things and I honestly don't know if we even know what it's going to be like um, it all feels very surreal trying to set up a classroom like this and I know you guys as teachers probably feel the exact same way it's very sad to think about your students not being able to talk to each other and collaborate in groups and do experiments together it's just going to take a chunk of what a classroom should be away so that's hard and I know that you guys feel my pain and you're all in the same boat and I think it's gonna be kind of for lack of a better word a crapshoot as to how to set up to be honest with you because no one school no one district no one state is doing it the same every um, district's plans are all they're all so different so which one's right and which one's wrong it's so hard um, my objective as their teacher is to make sure that they are learning and thriving and being successful as first graders that they are healthy and so whatever way I can do that I'm gonna try to figure it out so I think I'm gonna take those two groups in the middle those two desks out and I'm gonna bring those other tables back in and I'm going to spread these desks out a little bit and I'm going to spread those desks way over there out a little bit and I'm going to have two groups of tables and I think I'm going to order some balls, some yoga balls, some proper yoga balls this year and I think I'm going to just set it up and if they tell me I'm wrong well then they can bring the desks back <laughs> so um, but I did get approval from my boss to do what I felt I needed to do because um, time's ticking <laughs> We start school in three weeks, I think. Yeah, I think we only have three weeks until we start school, and we still don't have a plan as a district yet. And so I think it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. So I'm going to, I'm going to set you down. I am going to turn the camera off for this bit just because there's nothing really to record. I'm going to move tables out of the room and bring tables in. And I have to do that today because um, we don't have any custodians on campus today. So I'm going to do that and I will see you guys back when I'm done. Those, I have those, and I have those. And I don't know why I won't put anything on this carpet. This is my problem. We have these big carpets and they're wonderful, but for some odd reason I'm like I don't want to put anything on it I don't know why <laughs> maybe I could teach small group from up here and then just measure out sit spots where they're three feet from each other and I could still teach like six kids up there while everybody else is at their desk so that way I didn't have to draw 
bring everybody back here all the time. I could just spread them out because that's a it's I don't know if y'all can tell how big that carpet is. That is huge carpet. It takes up half my room. It's a wonderful carpet. But I could have like one here at each corner, two in the middle, and two there, and I could be between them, teaching a small group lesson. Don't know. But I just don't want to put anything on it. It's like sacred space or something. So that's where we're at. Um, and then my thought was to go ahead and get this bulletin board hung. But these are the two colors of paper that we had. We had white or we had blue. White is very thin and you can see through it. And then I don't know what I'm going to hang on that. I don't know if, we'll, if I'll be able to do like a writing station. But I'm thinking to turn this table sideways for right now and put these on that table because I don't know if this will be able to be used as a writing station. Maybe it will. Maybe like October will roll around and it'll be safe for the kids to move around the room again. But I don't know which color paper because this is my border. I don't know where my other border was. I had like an alphabet border that I used in writing station. But that's my border. It's the same border that's over here on that one. It's that same border. But I don't really like it up against the solid blue. So I guess I'm going to have to go white. I don't know. I'm going to put you down and I'm going to do that. think it's bad once I have words up there and stuff <laughs> but this is what I always use to hang my writing center stuff it's just a clothesline and clothespins and I always just kind of drape them and then I use um, it's Dee Dee Will's writing set that she has oh no it might be Tunstall Reagan Tunstall I'll try to link it the sets that I use um, for the cards I think it's Reagan Tunstall um, so that's that, but I'm thinking until <coughs> we get to that point, I may use this as like a show me your workstation, like Jossum work, that sort of thing. Um, and then I may put their mailboxes right here on the table. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's what that would look like. Students would walk over get their work. I could keep a bin here of stuff that I needed to file in there. I don't know how many of these I'm going to need. I do have two of them, so I have tw 24, enough for 24 kids, but um, there's, you know, there's 12 spots in each, and like I said, I don't know how many kids I'm going to have, maybe just 12, so that might work. Um, and then I have, that's what it looks like on the, I mean, excuse all the, the junk sitting out, but that's what it looks like. And it takes up that whole space. I don't know what that I'd use that space for, <laughs> but it just, it, to me, it feels claustrophobic and messy. So I know that we're not going to be using this as a writing center just yet. So I may put like awesome work up there for right now, and then I can always convert it to a writing center later on. I think that that might work. And I can just have it organized that way. So what do you think? Okay, so the next thing, I'll flip you around. The next thing that, um, where's my water? That I want to do today, I wanted to do my focus wall 
but I don't have all of my border because it got taken. And so I don't know how I'm going to set that up yet. Next thing I wanted to do today was um, empty these bins. I can't get them put in the library because they're waxing floors today, but I want to get them emptied and sorted and cleaned out. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay, so these are my bins for guided reading. Um, and I just put everything I'm going to need for that particular group in those bins for that week. Um, <clears throat> because we <laughs> ended um, in March, you know, because of the situation that we had, it's a hot mess right now because I just had to try to collect books where I could find them for my students and come in and get books out of their book boxes. And so I have to go through and sort all of these and get these put back where they belong in the book room. Um, so I thought I would show you as best as I can. I do have my phone to try to, to set up so I could try to get a little bit with the other camera, but there's not really, unless I were hanging from the ceiling, there's not really a good way to get this shot. So I'm going to show you one. Um, and then I will, of course, do a separate video of how I really organize this. Um, let me just dump that over. How I really organize it when it's time to start thinking about that because I don't know what it's, again, what it's going to look like this year. Um, so right now they are full because we were like right in the middle of, you know, guided reading groups, you know, about March time is when students starts clicking for students and you're really on a roll and you've had less interruptions in the spring and then you go to spring break and you come back and you have another month of solid good guided reading before hopefully you have to start testing, at least here, at, you know, we do and, and then coronavirus happens. So, um, these are all just bags from our library that they, from our book room that they um, ordered for us and um, there's like a little sheet that comes with this set um, and it gives you ideas of things to do and um, personally I don't use this a whole lot I will read through it um, but I don't I don't follow this entire plan because I um, I do what you know whatever my students are needing so and again, I'll show you what that looks like. I'll, I'll do a plan with me when it's time. I'll do an organizational video when it's time um, to set guided reading up. But I just needed to get these books put back in their pods, separated out by um, level. And so I could take them down to the book room and put them away um, to be used, you know, this year. Uh, and obviously, I probably won't be using a lot of these to start out because they're higher level. So... Yeah, that's where we're at. And I'm, so I'm going to try to film a little bit with my phone camera, but my little tripod that my phone sits on, it's not showing very much. So I don't know how much I will get to show you, but I'll do my best. So here we are, all cleaned off. This set is uh, my books. I think this was one of my students' books. I don't know where that one came from. Um, so I, I mismatched with that one. I don't know where theirs from. These belong to our reading series. And then all of those are going to go back down to our book room. And there's probably, I don't know, six or seven missing books from... The, all of those sets all together. So I think out of, um, you know, I have, I had four groups. Um, my students took their books home. 
Um, I probably had, I know I had 17 students with book bags that they took home with two or three books in it, so 100 plus books that were out, um, which I only have six or seven that didn't make it back in all the chaos of, of what happened back in March. I think, I think they did good. I'm proud of them. They were responsible and they, they did a good job. And I'm pretty sure we got most of the library books back as well. So, yay. So I think I'm going to go ahead and get out of here today. Um, and then I will come back tomorrow and start on my list of things to do. I feel like I'm sitting here not doing anything all day long. But we'll get there. The good thing is we have a little bit extra time. I know that we start trainings soon um, to learn how all of this is going to look, but they're not ready for us to do that yet. So I'm just going to keep setting things up. And I may go and see if I can find, I may go to Lakeshore and see if I can find those balls. That way I don't have to order them. So we'll see. Maybe I'll run down to Lakeshore tonight. It takes an hour or so to get to Lakeshore from here. So maybe I could do that tonight or maybe I could do it like first thing tomorrow morning or something. We'll see. i got a lot to do. But I'm going to get out of here. I did want to mention that I have almost hit 500 subscribers. Woohoo! Um, so when I hit that 500 subscriber mark, I am going to give out a TPT gift card for $25 to one of my subscribers um, to kind of celebrate and um, treat you guys. So don't forget to subscribe and like this video and comment and share and all that great stuff so that I can get some more subscribers on my channel. And I will see you guys tomorrow.